Holy shit. Hello and welcome to Military Combat Network. In today's video, I'm going to react to the Philippine Marine Force Recon. You guys have been asking for it all week. So here it is again, just like the Philippine Scout Rangers. I'm going in blind. I don't know anything about the Marine Force Recon. So I'm going to watch this and then I'm going to react to it. But I'm really excited to get into this video because I really enjoyed the Philippine Scout Rangers. It's probably my most favorite video I've ever seen so far and reacted to. Let's dive into this reaction. Yeah, the video quality is not they the are best. Rapid Deployment Strike Force, trained to operate on land, sea, and air. We have to have this mindset that we are willing to go and give more than the ordinary soldier. To become one of these warriors, looking good. The best of the best must undergo one of the world's toughest training courses. It's even worse than I imagined. Many I can try, imagine. But few succeed. Those who dare will be trained and tested in the push to receive the coveted badge in this elite band of brothers. Special Forces, Philippine Marine Force Recon. Guys, um, I've got a quick question for the viewers. Do they have to speak English during the courses or do they speak, you know, the home language Philippine? I, I'm not sure. Uh, like I said, I don't know too much about this. It looks like they have to speak English. This is the Marine Basic School, where they turn ordinary civilians into some of the toughest soldiers in the Philippines. For the next six months, these volunteers will endure some of the most unforgiving training the country has to offer. Mostly uh, based kami sa disiplina, dahil lang isang ang disiplina ay napaka-importante sa isang marino. Dahil may kahirapan ng training, kung hindi ka disiplinado, hindi mo kakayahin ng training. <laughs> this discipline is what forms the core of a force recon ethos, crucial in defending a country rich in conflict. The Philippines is an archipelago of over 7,000 islands. In the south, the nation's armed forces must wage war on scores of separatist militia like the Abu Sayyaf, dedicated to establishing independence from the Philippine government. The battleground is dense jungle and remote mountainous terrain, and these challenging conditions demand a special breed of soldier. What we wanted was a strategic uh, type of unit, which would which could conduct uh, far-ranging uh, reconnaissance, patrols, and operations. And uh, its personnel could infiltrate by sea, air, and land. The Force Reconnaissance Battalion is the special operations arm of the Philippine Marines, specialized in long-range reconnaissance patrols, amphibious assaults, and hostage rescue. We must have this attitude that we must be better than the others because the, the rest of the Marine Corps expect us to perform way above the performance of others. And it all starts here, Ternate Cavite, Southern Luzon. <laughs> The intensive training program is designed to be as realistic and hazardous as possible because as soon as they graduate, they will be sent into combat. Most of the Marines are really tough. Because when you land on a beach, 
There is no place for hesitation. There's no way of going back into the ships. So it's, the only way is forward. So the Marine Corps has developed very tough warriors. Yeah, the and basic training is tough, but those... You know, it's not just, obviously, the Marine Corps that is forging some elite soldiers. I mean, after watching the Philippine Scout Rangers, it's incredible how tough the Philippine military forces are. Honestly, I am very impressed. But looking uh, back a, a couple, about 30 seconds ago, I've noticed a slight difference already. The Philippine Marines are wearing jungle boots, whereas the Philippine Scout Rangers didn't. So someone who might know the why, please leave it in the comments down below. I'm I'm intrigued. I'd like to know why they have different uniforms and uh, you know different boots. Those that pass at the top can try out for the most elite team on offer. The Force Recon Battalion. Sa training palang nalalaman namin kung mayroon siyang potential na maging force reconnaissance dahil sa ability. If they get selected, they'll move on to three months of specialized training, where a new level of hell awaits. A lot is expected of us. Kaya sabi ko sa'yo, we're elite. We're supposed to be elite, not elitist. We have to have this mindset that we, we are willing to go um, and give more than the ordinary soldier. The Force Recon Battalion will fight a highly specialized kind of war, the core of which is represented in their badge. The knife shows that they are warriors. Black and lightning represent their stealth, and the parachute shape shows that they are airborne. Nice. They're just so about everything. Airborne training is a core competency ng special operations na mini maintain ng first recon. Using these skills, may nakaredy na tayong may nakaredy tayong personnel na capable na mag-operate, magkaroon ng future deployment. With a country spreading over 300,000 square kilometers, airborne insertion is the quickest way to deliver a team of special ops troops into a conflict zone. If you want to be Force Recon, you have to have the coveted silver wings. And the training to earn them is not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> Day one, and the recruits are stripped of their ranks. From this day on, everyone will be a God, number. It looks warm. On equal footing, they all share the same goal, the jump of a lifetime. I now declare your training starts today. Airborne training requires a special dedication and uh, courage. Because airborne training is uh, very challenging physically and mentally. They begin with the spring up and out roll call. A physical workout designed to help their landings. Hindi yung mahina yung katawan nila, hindi sila makakalabas sa aircraft, ganun. Kaya lahat ng mga exercises dyan na fun, na tinuturos ka nila is for the purpose ng jump training. This is just the beginning, and already some of them are feeling the strain. Recruit 23 is the oldest of the batch. Siyempre, stress. Stress talagang pagod ka talaga sa opening. Ang pinakamahirap is yung ground training or uh, tapening phase. Kasi dito, nagkakaroon ng adjustment eh. nag adjust ka psychologically, physically. In this first phase, close to 25% will be eliminated. Candidate 6 hopes he won't be one of them. Yung paghihirap dito sa airborne, wala, alas wala siyang pahinga. Ang pahinga mo lang every day, yung kain lang. Tapos every five minutes lang may pahinga. After that, wala na. Four counts in daily position. Five to the left and five to the right. Are you ready? Sabay-sabay. Yeah. Exercise. After roll call, the punishing exercises begin. Wow. Yung nakikita natin ngayon dyan na yung exercise nila is uh, para ma-practice nila yung balls of the feet. Para hindi ma-flatfooted yung paa nila at uh, makukurente yung paa ng atawa nila. Much of these exercises are especially designed to form the muscle memory needed for their ultimate mission. Jump from an aircraft, descend at 1,000 feet per minute, and land alive. 
This year, the Marines have selected more women candidates than ever before. It's a unique opportunity for Mary Joy Almedo. Sa akin, gusto ko mag-urban ng ano, para to prove to myself na kaya kong makipagsabayan din sa lalaki. Sinasabi ko hindi namin mapapantayan yung lakas na lalaki, ma'am, pero sa sarili ko, ginagawa ko yung makakaya ko to prove to myself. Wag na wag mong ano, wag mong i-separate talaga, wag mong i-separate yung ilo mo. Ang nakaklip talaga, i-clip mo talaga siya, wag mong alisin doon sa helmet mo. I-clip mo yung chin. The first thing these recruits will learn is the last thing that happens. The landing. Getting the body into a flexible position for it to withstand the impact of hitting the ground. Not landing correctly could lead to severe injury or death. This is just a taste of what the next five weeks are going to be like. It's a lot of repetitive moves and motions, but this is where their discipline and focus will be put to the test. And ganun talaga, pag uh, nag-undergo ka ng training, mahirap talaga sa mahirap yun. So, isipin mo na lang na sa training na uh, lahat yun may purpose, kaya yung ginagawa. And uh, design yun talaga para ma-overcome mo lahat ng whatever adversaries na okay, maharap mo siya in the future. Next, they move on to practicing landing on the move. It's a chance for them to begin to feel the impact of a landing. <laughs> From here, the recruits move to Fort Magsaysay, where they will find out if they have what it takes to jump from a tower 60 feet high and survive. I imagine it to be worse. It's even worse than that. For the toughest missions, the Philippine Marine Corps send in their specialist operators, the Force Reconnaissance Battalion. These men are the best of the best. Hoping to join this elite group okay. are 92 men... He's saying these are the best of the best. Let me know in the comment section who you think is the best. Philippine, Marine, Force Recons, or Philippine Scout Rangers. Let me know down below. Men and women in stage one of their airborne training course. Over the next two weeks, the rigors of the training schedule will become extreme as they prepare to move from ground training to tower jumps. Already, the toughening phase has forced out two volunteers. Nandito kami pumasok dito. Hindi ko alam kung mag-50% yung makakagraduate dito. Kasi mostly mga nagbabak out. Dahil sa minsan sa sobrang ding pagod. But the seven women trying to make the grade are still hanging on. Sobrang pagod din. Hindi na rin kaya minsan. Kaya matatawag talaga siyang special. Okay. For some reason, that I've got the same boots on now as the Philippine Scout Rangers. But earlier on, I'm pretty sure they had jungle boots on. This time, yung class na to, baka kunti yung nag-back out dahil nga mahaba yung preparation, maganda yung preparation nila. One of the riskiest procedures for an airborne warrior is to safely exit an aircraft. The force recon jump as teams with split-second accuracy. Delays on exit could mean landing miles from your target. Tayo ngayon sa Macdor, ha? Ito Macdor, ito yung bali aircraft natin sa lupa. Kasi wala tayong aircraft na pagpaktisan. Dito muna tayo magpaktis. Ito na din ginagamit ito sa exit. Stand in the door. Kumano pa yung sergeant? Trot siya. Huwag kayong balon ka agad. Umexit kayo dito. Ulitin ko naman. Takin yung ulo. Clip your elbow. Proper grabbing of reserve. While counting. Knees together. Feet together. And spring up and out. Kasi pag di ka mag-spring, either mabangga kayo sa side ng aircraft. Oh, hell. 10,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Hop! Ayun. Grab siya niya yan, di ba? Ang jib. Titingnan ka ganyan yan. Ulit. Baka. 
Langsung Persia or Parsial atau total Ha? Yan terbaru ng GM Kaya gagawin nyo yan Bukan Makdor natin dito Gagawin nyo proper This training is for fixed line jumping A line is attached to the aircraft Which automatically releases the parachute As soon as they jump But things don't always go to plan Interesting. Their next test is to practice the malfunction procedures while being suspended five feet off the ground. They have to react to any of three possible scenarios. Necessary procedures that could someday save their lives. Water landing! Helmet disengaged! First up is candidate one, one of the senior members of the batch. His performance will set the bar for the others. Yung mental address, yung positive attitude, at dapat nandun lang. Very confident naman po. Okay. Okay. Get together. Look to the horizon. Okay, ready? No tap, no go. Go. Ten thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. The white flag represents looking up and seeing the parachute open. Three tap level. Treetop level means he needs to release his straps in time for a water landing. Hello, Owen. Balik na lang. Yo, nahirapan akong magtanggal ng right stop. Sa kalumaan na kasi nung gamit. Na ano siya. Hindi na siya madaling i-release kasi pang training lang yung mga gamit. What's the airboard? Pag nangyari po yung ganun sa totoong buhay, may mangyayari hindi maganda sa iyo kasi madelay ka na. And that delay means he runs the risk of getting dragged under water by his chute and drowning. But when things go wrong, the force recon is always ready. Adapting and surviving in every situation is an essential part of their training, especially in the water. Okay. Strapping the legs up and the hands Looks to me like Navy SEALs, American Navy SEALs. Um, yeah, I know what's coming. I haven't seen this, but I know what's coming. To learn how to deal with potential drowning situations, recruits are bound hand and foot and thrown into the sea. I love you, Force Recon! Go! I love you, Force Recon. Get in there. Love it. Pag boys nandun ko sa dalim, at kinapos ka ng hininga mo, the fear of drowning can lead to panic, so the men are first taught to relax. Next, they will have to learn to control their breathing and make their way to shore. That looks really hard. 10% of the Force Recon recruits who take this test are expected to fail. Back at the Special Ops Camp, the Airborne course is in the final stage of their ground training. Next, they need to overcome their toughest challenge yet. When Airborne soldiers land in high wind conditions, they risk being dangerously dragged for long distances. They must learn how to get out of potential trouble. To practice, 10 men will drag a recruit along the ground to simulate wind drag. To pass, they need to be able to regain control by standing up. Itong isang pa, itapon dito sa side dito. Pagsabayin, tapos isikat. 
Pag nasikat na siya, pag nakatayo na, marandaman mo nang itayo ka na niya, sabay bitaw itong talay. Ready, go! Hila, hila, hila. Hila, hila, hila. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! They've got just a few meters to force their bodies around. It's female recruit 52's turn. At five feet, she is one of the smallest on the course. That is small. Ito, ibigay mo to ha, ibigay mo to kung siya, ganyan ha, saka mo ibadit, ibadit please ha, pull up ka muna sa akin, ibadit please ha, ayos, ibigay mo to, sige 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 to, I hope she does it. Fifty two has one last try to get this right. I hope she does it. Oh, well done. Good effort. Papagad lang mag pull up kasi sa ano ba sa force ng naghihila sa akin masyadong papwersa tapos hindi ko makontrol yung pwersa nila. Tumatiming pa ako ma'am. Now, the rest of the men have to prove they can do it too. With all the ground techniques conquered, it's time to take things higher up. Phase two moves to this training tower, a massive 60 feet in the air. They call it the Tower of Hell. The Philippine Force Recon is an elite unit that specializes in land, sea, and airborne special operations. Part of what makes them so effective is their expertise in the close quarter combat method, Pakiti Tersha Kali. This Filipino martial art arms the users with a complete strategy to destroy the enemy at close range. Ito na pag nag-strike sa strike ang sinyo. Pag tras mo dito is susot siya dito and then mag-lock. Lock sa. Lock. So yan yung purpose na kung paano masama disarm at the same time, pwede mo sang kuhanin dito. So yun yung lock, little blade, hand guard. And then ito naman sa yung pull guard, yung bawang tumagasa dito sa kamay ko, pag tumagasa, ibig sabihin, ito sa pwede sang guard. So may pull guard siya. At the same time, laglag mo sa dito, kuha sa dito, lock. So, kung, kung sa practical, hawakan mo lang yung dito niya, at the time, tagas na dito. So, disarm na sa simitin, tagas na dito. This ancient system of fighting can be traced back to the 1500s. Its elaborate movements were created so they could practice the art in front of their Spanish colonial rulers without causing suspicion. Looking more like a dance than a martial art. Today, these moves are used against a different adversary. Na isip ko nito man dahil kasi nung mga the time remaining year na since of 1990, marami na pupugutan na Marines, mga kabrader na kabaro ko. So nagisip ako kung paano gawin na pang counter don sa mga bulo na yung pupugutan ng mga kalaban na buhay. 
The practice focuses on the proper use of the Philippine bolo, a long, heavy, single-edged machete. Each thrust is meant to kill. Uh, sa 24 hours na bar fight, hindi pwedeng hindi ka maubusan ng bala. Usually, pag naubusan kami ng bala, next in line namin na uh, uh, nagdidepend, ang opsyon namin is yung bolo. Dahil ang kalaban, magagaling din sa... Okay, so... The bolo is used when they're running out of ammunition. Uh, paghawak ng bolo. Yes, na rin natin ngayon. Ito yung buhay. Pag nilagyan mo siya ng, ng extension na bolo, ito pa yung hapa ng buhay. Nice. Yun. It extends your life. So, ito yung natawag namin na uh, karupong ng buhay. Bolo is my life. Close quarter combat is a vital part of recon operations, especially in the southern islands of Mindanao, which has been plagued by Islamic insurgency and terrorism for decades. Thousands of well-armed fighters continue a campaign of guerrilla warfare against the state. Because uh, the, the current trend is uh, what we foresee in future wars is not wars between countries anymore, but wars between uh, proxies of these countries and usually these are insurgents or terrorists and what you need are elite highly trained soldiers who can conduct surgical operations in whatever and whatever place they're, they're deployed the force recon battalion was called into action when it was assigned to conflict-ridden mindanao in 2000 their mission to neutralize the forward defenses of camp abubakar to clear the way for the rest of the Marine battalions to move in. Master Sergeant Luis Marmol was part of that operation. So, ang mission namin doon, makuha namin yung detachment sa harapan. Kasi yun yung paanan going to Abu Bakar. So, dapat makuha yung isang detachment doon bago po forward ka sa ta. Then, ang position, galing kami sa from down, going to up. So, nasa up sila. So, kahit outnumber nga kami, so, tinugo na lang namin yung uh, mission na binigay sa amin. Using classified tactical maneuvers, they've reached their objective. But three of his comrades died in battle. For the 90 men and women hoping to join the prestigious ranks of the Force Recon, they're now entering phase two of their airborne course. Here, they must face the dreaded Tower of Hell, where they will be tested on exiting and malfunction drills while speeding down a zip line over 100 meters. Baba lang yan. Bigyan nyo na lahat yung ano yun dyan. Mga karapat dapat para ma-check out kayo. It's the first time they will find out if they really have what it takes to be airborne. One small step into thin air takes a huge amount of courage. If vertigo kicks in, they will fail the course. Instruction doon sa taas. <laughs> yung riser nasa likod dyan. Huwag kayong papayag na yung riser nasa harapan nyo. Dahil pagtalo nyo, tatama yan sa mukha nyo. The feeling, uh, halos lahat kami na-excite actually. Kasi uh, ito yung masasabi naming last phase ng training namin before the final jump. Spring up, ha? Uh. Out and count one to four. Huh? Grab your reserve. Stop in your head. Uh, be together. Check your uh, malfunction. Go! The instructors are looking for 100% confidence when exiting the aircraft because hesitation could lead to an uncontrollable spin and possible death. This is the moment of truth for candidate one. Normal lang naman yung kaba, pero dapat kong isipin para makapag-perform ng maayos. What, sir? Stand on the door. Stand on the door, sergeant! Stand by! Go! One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, two, Nice. Marami sa ano, deficiency. Pushing sa tower, delay and tuck in of head. 
pass counting, pag jump niya, yung reserve niya, mali ang pag grabs. Most common sa first day kasi nakikita natin yung weak exit at saka yung grabbing of reserve. So hindi nila masyadong nape-perform yun kasi kinakabahan sila. Gagawin natin itong one week para paulit-ulitin natin sila para ma-perfect nila yung jump. Para pagdating ng jump week, okay nila. Alongside proper techniques, the instructors have come up with their own special remedy to help spur on the nervous recruits. Ah, ito, sir, yung ano? What is it? Yung pampatapang nila. Gagawin natin, inumin nila para pampalakas ng loob. <laughs> para pagtalo nila doon, malakas yung loob na nila. Peppers. Bawat balik nila, inom, kain. Yeah, chili peppers, yeah. <laughs> Sobrang tapang na nila. <laughs> Candidate 6 is one of the lucky Burning. first to try. Lagyan muna kita ng lipstick para tumapang ka ng tumapang. At the end of the zip line, a rope stops the recruits from hitting the trees. Next up is female recruit 22, one of the seven women trying to make the grade. But she's in trouble. The damp conditions are making it difficult to stop. Ooh. Fear is still stopping many from perfecting their exits. They have seven days to get it right or they miss the jump of their lives and the chance to be part of one of the most elite special ops teams in the country. From airborne operations to sea and jungle warfare, these men of the Force Recon are the first amongst equals. Of the 9,000 Marines today, only 300 have earned the right to wear this badge of honor. But they only get there if they successfully pass some of the toughest training in the Philippine Armed Forces. When forward observers need to be sent far behind enemy lines, the Force Recon Battalion send their eight-man teams. But they don't go alone. They're joined by a deadly team of Marine Scout snipers. Nice. Sinusuportahan din nila yung mga operating units sa potok. Pinuputukan nila yung kalaban na merong, ano, kinukuberan nila yung nag -aasol. The Marine Scout snipers are masters of camouflage and marksmanship. Nice. Living up to their motto, one shot, one, one kill. kill. Ang isang sundalo pag marunong bumaril o nang una makakalis ka sa dami ng bala na ipinuputok. Once na pumutok pa, alam mong may tatamaan ka. To pass the final stage of sniper training, they must put their own lives on the line. This is the confidence firing test. Good A mistake hell. in this live fire exercise doesn't just mean failing the course, it could mean instant death for their comrade in arms. Oh my god. This is worse than the Philippine scout. It's designed to replicate the psychological pressure of a real operation. Holy shit. Fifty percent of sniper trainees fail this sharpshooting course, either by not making the grade or backing out on this final confidence test. The members of the airborne class are in week four, the towering phase. This stage is key in perfecting the proper exiting procedure from an aircraft. Each day, the challenge of carrying more gear has been added. Pinatalayan ito para sa quick release. Kung halimbawa may combat jump, ito na yung mga dala-dala niya. 
Today, the jump has to be made wearing full combat gear, all 15 kilograms, and carrying a weapon. Ali, ito yung ano, last day ng tawiring ng mga estudyante. Start sila, hindi pa masyadong marurong, pero ngayon, ano na, perfect na nila yung, halos perfect na nila yung pag-jump dito sa tower. tower. Katapos nito, ma-check out sila lahat. Proceed tayo sa ano, yung actual jump na. May ka pa pa rin po. Kayang kaya laban. Bring up and out! Elbow clip! Head tuck in! All sorts of! Hunt! Thousand! Two thousand! Kasi kaya dapat mag-qualify nila yung lahat na ang rifle o pack na same pa rin yung ginagawa nila doon sa ground, yung proper damage of reserve. Ang napansin namin doon sa ano, yung one jump niya kaya, yung elbow sticking out. Dapat ang panang reserve, dapat dito sa gilid. Delikado yun kasi mula sa taas, pababa ka, ang bilis lang, sikas lang yan. Mataas na yung 20 sikas yan, baba ka na. Pasaes namin palagi na pag exit, hawak ang reserve automatic. Traveling at over 35 kilometers an hour, there isn't much time to think. Everything has to be done by instinct, or there won't be enough time to pull your reserve and save your life. Proper gun, grabbing reserve, ha? Oh, Sergeant! Yep! O si Binon! Hello! Yun sa masa kanya ngayon, kasi rifle siya, yung hindi niya natanggal yung ano yung kuha ng baril yung tali tapos kasi tanggalin mo yun kasi once nanggalan ka na eh delikado sa mga ganun na ano na sa jumpers na ganun na di matanggal yung yung ano yung tali ng rifle niya maharing ma-injury siya dahil yung baril nga niya nakatali din dito si Binuan ito tayo sa Binuan Sergeant yung releasing ng baril mo ha sumate ka ay Sergeant kaya tingin ko naman makuha na sila na lahat dito kasi sa tagal naman ng training, ma magawa nila ito maganda lahat itong mga kuha na ito. Uh, pinapagawa namin. That's good. It is the last day before the jump and the airborne class is putting in some last minute practice. Day by day, mahirap po na yun. Mahirap. Awa po ng Diyos na sa ipasan naman po namin lahat. Maginig ha, tandaan nyo nga kung anong jumpers kayo. Maginig. Porto, tandaan nyo kung anong jumpers kayo ha. Back lagi yung 5.7 performance. Hindi yan, check body position and count. Check canopy and gain canopy control ha. Panto! 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 Ang pa, posisyon na! Huwag ka ganyan bigat na yun! As they contemplate the final hours before their last test, the recruits share some lighter moments. It's key in strengthening the ties of brotherhood amongst Marines. Itong airborne training ng Marines ay napakahirap. Pero at the end of the day, pagkatapos ng training, so sama-sama kami sa barracks, nakakapag-usap-usap kami. So kahit pa paano, nawawala yung pagod, yung hirap. So para lang po kami isang pamilya dito na nagkakatuwaan. Jump last night, we jumped the night before. We got a jump tonight as we never jumped before. Depending on these bonds is how head. small elite teams overcome enemy forces. It is a matter of life and death. Because behind enemy lines, the only thing they can depend on is each other. The recruits may have conquered their fear of the tower, but things were about to get tougher. All their weeks of training will be put to the test, and this time, if they make the same mistakes, 
they could pay the ultimate price. In the Philippines, an elite force was formed to counter the nation's communist and Islamist insurgencies. They are the Marine Force Recon Battalion, who are ready to take action at any moment on land, sea, and air. Quick reaction force. The day they have all been training for has arrived. It is jump week. Today, it is fly or fail. The recruits will have to exit from an aircraft at 1,500 feet and land safely a total of five times in order to earn their silver wings. Kung naririnig mo ako, advice ni CD, mag-early ng two seconds from go pan and side over. Roger, Roger. Okay, Tango Yankee, uh, monitor. They will be jumping out of a Bell UH-1 helicopter. This aircraft is used to drop troops into remote areas for an assault, taking the enemy by surprise. The drop zone looks like any area of scrubland, but if you're coming at it from 1,500 feet, it's a minefield of potential hazards. Despite five weeks of training, their first jump from the aircraft is exposing all of their mistakes. True to being a Marine, they have to be ready for anything, even landing on unexpected terrain. Despite the unconventional landing, recruit 34 passes and moves on to his next jump. But for one recruit, this is his last jump for a long time. Oh, I got injured. His right leg is broken. Oh, God. And it will be another two years before it's strong enough for him to jump again. The rest of the airborne class is getting the hang of it. But there is a problem. Training has been stopped. The aircraft has been called away to an operation in Isabella, northern Philippines. The conflict this time coming from the country's 40-year struggle with communist insurgents. Hindi kasi maiwasan yung magkakaroon ng pagsukwa. Sa ngayon, continuous the basic training of the jumpers and then wait for tomorrow. With just a jump away from receiving the coveted silver wings, all the recruits can do is wait nervously. Nobody knows if they'll have the chance to pass the course or if this conflict means all their hard work will be for nothing. I guess they'll get it done and pass out. It is the final week of the airborne course.
After days of waiting, the recruits finally have a chance to complete the five jumps to earn their wings. Okay, next is Nick. Sino pa hindi naka first jumper dyan? Oh, pasok dito. Meron na po ma'am na four jumps. Yung actually, 51 jumpers. Then yung naka three jumps pa lang ma'am, 38. Just as the first team jump, strong winds halt the training. This weather is the most dangerous time for jumping. And one recruit is missing. Meron po sila pala yung doon sa kanina. Kasama siguro namin, gawa ng malakas na talaga yung hangin. Okay na, di ba rin po? Ang yan na balance masyado yung ano niya. Na pani-opera yung parachute niya, kaya lumayo talaga niya ng gusto. Malakas na hangin sa taas eh. Labing lakas. Tapos mag-aan pa siya. Wala, ipapadpad na lang. So he's blown. He's being blown away by the wind. The wind has caught recruit one. It's a small injury, but with the strong wind, it could have been much worse. Finally, a break in the weather. Recruits 52, 6, and the rest of their group are on their final jump. And ha, pag natapos na itong panimang jump namin, ma'am, tayo, uh, makatawag na qualified airboard ka naman pa. Then, dito mo na lahat mo, uh, a-apply lahat na natutunan mo from the beginning of this, this course. Dito lang po, natatakot din po ako. Kahit sino naman po siguro, matatakot sa... This is the moment they've all been working towards, their fifth and final jump, the one that will finally earn them their silver wings. That looks insane. They just could have all landed it correctly and uh, passed the course. Napakasarap sa tas. Although nakakatakot sa una. Whew. Sulit na sulit po. Yung pagod namin sa training, sulit na sulit po. Ang sarap po. Parang yung sa una nakakatakot yung the moment na you jump. Pero nung naando na, nung naramdaman ko bumuka na yung shoot. Ang sarap sa pakiramdam, parang hindi ako gumagalaw. Sarap maging airborne! I love airborne! <laughs> After six weeks of intense physical and mental training, they have now earned the right to be called Airborne. Right up, Romesia! Airborne! Airborne! This is uh, Ritual. Uh, welcome to the Airborne family. So basically, you get your pins stuck into your chest. Airborne! Uh, itong bats ng... Nang Marine Corps, simbolo ito ng Philippines, ha? Red, blue. Alika, 3-5! Ever! 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 Masarap kasi, ah, subukan mo na yung dumulon sa 
Totoo mong material na aircraft. Para kang angel na lumulutang sa lapaap. Yeah, I really enjoyed this video. Slightly different to the Philippine Scout Rangers, but still enjoyed it. Um, so basically, I'm guessing from what I've seen, it's they've shown one part of actual Marine Force recon training, which is the airborne jumps. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, leave a comment. I will try and reply if it's within the first couple of days. And also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. It really helps the channel. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.